and share the PowerPoint. And as we go, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All right, welcome to the Rehabilitation Counseling and Disability Science master's program information session so that's a full mouthful we're excited that you all have shown some interest in our new master's program and i say new because we just welcomed our first cohort um, in the fall of this year so we ex we are excited that we already have students enrolled and working in this field this is a master's program as i said in rehabilitation counseling where you'll be eligible to sit for your certification as a rehabilitation counselor as well as be specialized in disability sciences and working with people with disabilities so feel free to ask questions throughout the chat in the box or, and we will do our best to provide you as much information as possible throughout the morning. All right, I'd like to introduce myself and then I will go back to pictures as so we can see people's faces when they talk. Actually, I'll do that now so you see my face. Um, if I find the right screen, no big deal. This is what they get for having me coordinate everything. Uh, I am Dr. Jill Heilman. I am the program coordinator for the Rehabilitation Counseling uh, and Disability Science Master's Program here at USF. I am also an Assistant Professor of Instruction. So if you do join our Master's Program, you will get to see me as one of your instructors, among many other faculty within our program. Um, so a little bit about myself, as I have a background in rehab counseling, as well as specializing and in showing interest in pediatric disabilities. And I run a nonprofit for uh, uh, kids with disabilities in the Tampa Bay area. Next, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Chu. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Dr. Chu Chun Chu. I'm actually the program director of the Re Rehabilitation and Mental Health Counseling Program. And this new program is one of our new brand of our baby. Um, so Dr. Hyman is the program coordinator and I oversee the on-campus and the online program as well. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, yeah, my background is also in rehab. Uh, my background is actually in rehab psychology um, and my research interest in social support and right now people like teenagers with um, developmental disabilities. So that's what I'm working on right now. If you are interested in any of these topics, um, come to me and we can talk about that. And I will also be teaching in the program. Great, thank you, Dr. Chu. I think Dr. Dillahunt said to give her a couple minutes, so I'm gonna let Betsy introduce herself. Hey, hi everyone. My name is Betsy Davis. If you get an email from me, it will say Elizabeth Davis. Um, and so I go by either. But in my capacity with this program, I will help you with your application, um, answering any questions about that process. I also, once you're a student, um, help with registration and general support. I've worked in higher ed um, or in education actually for almost 20 years, um, but higher ed specifically for more than a decade. And I've primarily worked with adult learners. Um, and I really love um, working with graduate students because everybody is here for a reason and it's almost like a calling um, to ha either change society or change their own lives. And I think it's a really powerful time. So I'm, I'm grateful to be on this journey with you. Great, thank you. I appreciate it, Betsy. Dr. Dillahunt, are you available to introduce yourself? Yes, hi. Hi, sorry about that. I was having some audio issues. Um, Dr. Dillahunt, working from home today, been in the program uh, for over 10 years, been working in Voc Rehab for hmm, about 18 years and teach the career and lifestyle assessment class and do a lot of work um, in terms of community reintegration for individuals with traumatic brain injury and also um, vocational rehabilitation. So I'm looking forward to meeting with all of you. And also if you have any questions about the rehab um, RSA grant, um, we can certainly, um, answer some questions about that today. So that's one other wonderful opportunity that will be available for you. Yes, and we're going to go into that in a lot more detail in a few minutes. Thank you, mm -hmm. Dr. Dillahunt. Is Dr. Smith with us today? I wasn't sure she was able to log in. She was. Yes, he, I, oh, great. Okay, great. Dr. Smith, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Dr. Smith. I am an associate professor here at the Clinical Rehabilitation Mental Health Counseling Program and uh, we welcome you here today. I've joined to uh, share information also with Dr. Dillahun about the RSA Scholar Program and uh, also 
Um, I'll be teaching the advanced case management class for the RCDS program. So welcome and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Heilman. Thank you, Dr. Smith. We appreciate it. All right, I am going to go ahead and share my screen and we will continue on. Um, oh, I am still sharing my screen. Great. Well, and then I accidentally unshared it. Dr. Island, can I add? So there are actually um, other faculties um, as well, but um, they are not able uh, available to come today, but you will get to meet them once you are in the program. Yes, there'll be a number of faculty who will be teaching all the different classes and um, you'll we'll send out introductions through where you can find information on each faculty member on our website as well. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. All right, we'll pick back up on the PowerPoint. Um, here we go from current slide. So today, some of the things that we're going to be talking about and allowing you to get to know, um, we're going to talk about the mission of the Rehabilitation Counseling and Disability Sciences Program. Um, in addition, we're going to talk about a grant program that offers funding to students, uh, which is the Rehabilitation Scholars Program, and Dr. Smith and Dr. Dillahunt will share that in more detail. We're going to go over some highlights of what the program entails, as well as careers that you can have when graduating with this degree. We'll specifically go over the plan of study so you can see what the actual classes are that if you were to uh, join us in this program as well as not just the on our online classes, but also what field experiences and field placement experiences are all about for this program. In addition, we'll let you know what certi certifications you're eligible upon graduation. And at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about the application process, and Betsy will go over that in detail um, and touch on some other tuition and scholarships. And at the end, we'll offer a wonderful opportunity for you to ask questions. So if you have questions, again, write them in the chat. Betsy will share them with us, or you can wait till the end. All right, Dr. Chu. Okay, um, the mission of the RCDS program. So this program, the development of this program is kind of a, a dream come true um, because for a long time, for a long time, and Dr. Smith and Dr. Dinan will tell you about the needs for the RSA scholarship program, that this is a, 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 a field that is in actually great demand that we don't have enough sufficient rehab counselors in the field. And most of the rehab counseling programs now, because of all the regular all the poli policies um, and state licensure boards requirements that a lot of focus has been just on mental health counseling and we really want something to focus on disability diversity accessibility um, and advocacy so we put things together that we think will be most um, helpful to when to people who are interested in working with people with disabilities and their families so um, this is the 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 mission that we we want to um, achieve, and hopefully you will find this program it's a great fit for your um, education goals. Thank you very much. Um, next, we're going to turn it over to Dr. Dillahunt and Dr. Smith to share about um, some of our RSA Scholars Program, and we'll go into other scholarship opportunities at a later time. And Dr. Dillahunt is the director, so I'm going to defer to her okay. to provide the update. OK, Hi. would you like to um, us to see you or just leave the slide up? What works best for you? You can just leave the slide up. OK, great. OK, yeah. All right. Well, hi, Dr. Dillahunt. Um, again, I know we have how many people do we have on the line today? You said about oh, looks like we got 22 people on here. That's great. Yeah. Um, OK, so um, welcome. <laughs> And the RSA Scholars Opportunity, I'm just going to go ahead and remove myself because I distract myself, is something that we've been doing for a while now in the program. So our first cycle of RSA Scholars um, has completed. That was a five-year cycle. And now we're currently in our second uh, five-year cycle. We are admitting, I believe, up to 11 more students over the next two years into the program. And this program is really great because it will uh, offer you an opportunity to have some monies to help support your tuition as well as get you um, will provide you with additional courses to help you develop your skills in vocational rehabilitation. So this program will offer approximately $26,000 to each student. That money is to be budgeted over the uh, student's program of study. And what we do is we do three payouts of about $8,667 for three semesters and 
you use those funds to pay for your schooling and whatever's left over, you budget it for the rest of your program of study. And then the only thing that is required of you is to complete the additional RSA elective, which you can do as a non degree seeking student if you're working for the state or uh, you can you know, work with your advisors on, on how to best do that. And then you're required to work in a public or private vocational rehabilitation setting for three years. So you get three payouts, which equates to three years of payback. And uh, that pretty much is it for the scholarship. The hope is to build capacity within the state of Florida and throughout the nation. If you choose to go elsewhere outside of the state of Florida for folks to, um, you know, work in voc rehab and have voc rehab be their career. So uh, that is the purpose of the grant. And uh, so far we've had a, a lot of success with our students. Our students have gotten jobs in public and private voc rehab. They've worked for nonprofit organizations that have vocational rehabilitation units. And overall they've been um, happy. We also provide opportunities for networking, um, going to conferences, and uh, those fees can also be used to help pay your CRC examination fee. Dr. Smith, would you like to add anything? No, I think you did a great job, but since we aren't able to stay on for the whole orientation, um, maybe we should see if there are any questions before we lock off. That's a great idea. Does anyone have any questions about our RSA Scholars Program that offers funding to support your graduate education? Um, you can post it in the chat or go ahead and speak up now. And if you yeah. think of questions later, we will also have Dr. Chu on that might be able to answer those as well. Nicole sure. asked if you could um, explain what the payback part of the scholarship yeah, means. Yeah, sure. The payback part of the scholarship means your your payback in time. So you would pay back your scholarship in time. So three years you would work for a public or a private agency where most of your tasks are related to vocational rehabilitation in that position. So it could be a voc rehab counselor, it could be in private voc rehab working as a vocational consultant or specialist, or you might work for some some organization like the Grow Group or Tampa Crossroads where they have a vocational rehabilitation uh, type positions. And this is a federal grant, so even if you're living in a state outside of Florida, you're still eligible for the RSA Scholars Program, I believe. Yeah. So and no, it's not free work. You get paid for those three years. Yeah, those you, are you pay three. back your time, but you still have a salary. Yeah, so you'll get an employ. You'll apply for a job upon graduation that meets the needs of the payback, and then you'll receive your from that agency. You'll receive your salary as well as benefits, and then that will count towards your payback of three years. One of the nice things about it is newer rehab counselors or disability specialists. It's a great way to work for an agency and learn the ropes in the practical and get that practical work experience. Um, and if you want to go out on your own and do a private rehab counseling practice after that, you can. But it's a great way to use those three years to grow as a professional. And Our we have one more question up from Allison um, asked just again, if you could remind us how to apply for the scholarship. Sure. So I put in there on, on our, I don't want to take away, but on our um, RMHC website, you should see um, the RSA Scholars Program, and you can click on that. There's a link to the application, and we, um, because this is a new startup of the RCDS program, what we have decided to do is to, we typically only accept in the spring, but we've gone ahead and decided to do a second round of applications. And so the, I believe the application deadline is, October 15th. Oh, good. This is better. I don't want to tell you guys the wrong information. So if you come here and you go to apply, those are some of our scholars. So you'll see, and we'll also send out a link to this website when we send out a, we'll send out a follow-up email with this, um, with all the information you need mm -hmm. to apply to the RSA program, as well as to our program. So one, it's September 1st, and if you're applying for our spring admission, um, I recommend you know applying early so you can also get your application in for the RSA Scholars Program. You can apply for the Scholars Program without having been notified yet of your acceptance um, just to get the paperwork started, but then you would, once you're notified of acceptance to our program, then we pass that information on to the Scholars Program. I see a question from Misty about uh, being able to be at an addictions rehab facility. It has to be a vocational rehabilitation position, but we do have some scholars who had 
Tampa Crossroads approved, but it's because they specifically work in helping those clients to um, re-engage in employment. So as long as it specifies working in voc rehab, those are the keys. Um, and you will work, if you are an RSA scholar, you will be assigned, um, Dr. Chu will be your advisor, and she will help you with finding the practicum and internship experiences that will support that and help you lead to employment upon graduation. Great questions, anyone else? Yes, yes, I have a question. How long is the program? Because apparently the scholarship is uh, is for three semesters. So how long would the program be? Yeah, great question. Um, our program, I'll go to the next slide, is 60 credits or two full years, which is six semesters. Um, they give larger portions. Each semester costs 7500 Um for you, but you'll get about 8,800. So it pays a large portion of that and they allot it over three semesters. The reason they do that is because of every semester you're given distributed money, that's a year of payback you offer. So they give it in the first three semesters and you can use the money within those first three semesters as well as extra money you can hold on to help pay for subsequent semesters. Thank you. Yes, of course. Anyone else? Um, I had a question. So this degree or program is like a mental health counseling, but specifically focused on rehabilitation and like disability studies. Um, I'm just asking because I'm not really sure what I want to do for grad school. Uh, like what other programs would there be like at USF? And not specifically this program, but like would be in like the same realm, I guess, of mental health counseling. Yeah, so today we do offer an on-campus program in rehabilitation and mental health counseling. For online programs, I don't know all the online programs at USF. This one specific, today's session is specifically about rehab counseling and disability sciences. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying it though. Pretty no, no worries. Take your time, good questions. I just don't know all the answers. Anyone else? Well, I, this is Dr. Dillahan. I'd like to add um, with our programs, um, you know, there's a lot to offer within our programs. I'm sure you're going to go over it. So all of our students that graduate from the online RMHC, pro I'm sorry, the on-campus RMHC program are eligible to sit for the certified rehab counselor exam. And there also are concentrations available on campus in addictions and, um, uh, well, I don't know how, how to speak about the MFT, but I know that some of our students complete the program, get their CRC, and also are interested in addictions. Something else our students can do is become licensed. So it gives you an opportunity to, um, and I don't want to take Dr. Chu's thunder here, but you can also work as a licensed professional in a lot of different realms. So it's a very flexible degree. We have students working Salvation Army, Goodwill, Tampa Crossroads, DACO, Behavioral Health Unit. So it's really a nice, flexible degree. The The wonderful thing about getting your CRC is you also have the um, expertise and the designation of understanding and working with people with diverse disabilities, which actually is something that is highly sought after right now. We don't have enough CRCs to meet the demand, so you will have a lot of opportunities available to you, especially if you get your CRC um, and you consider licensure. Right, and we're going to go me. into we're going to go into this master's program in much more detail throughout this presentation. We just touched on the RSA scholars program because I know Dr. Dillahunt and Dr. Smith can't stay for the whole time. So we will try to answer as many of those questions throughout the presentation as well. Any other questions? All right, Betsy, if any pop in, just go ahead and interrupt. Dr. Smith and Dr. Dillahunt, thank you very much for telling us more about the RSA Scholar and taking time out of your day to spend it with us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, you too. Uh, a little more about the RCDS program um, here at USF. It's fully online 60 credit master's program. We do offer a fall admission time as well as a spring admission time. Our on campus program does only offer a fall admission, so it's a little perk of the online program that we do have two admission cycles. 
Um, upon graduation through the coursework in your field experience, you will be credentialed to have the opportunity to sit for what we call the certification as a rehabilitation counselor and get your um, CRC, which is Certified Rehabilitation Counselor. That's a national certification here in the US, and so you can take that from state to state wherever you live. Unlike some of the LMHCs, you have to be certified within each state. A national, The CRC is a national certification that can go from state to state. Our program does offer a flexible format. We know that there's a lot of working professionals that are looking for a master's degree. Um, so you will, most of the classes are fully online and they are asynchronous where you log in, you have lecture videos, podcasts. We've come up with so many creative opportunities for you to learn. Um, and then you'll do projects, presentations, uh, dis group discussions online, everything online. The clinical classes like group counseling or counseling skills and techniques, you will have live sessions where you'll work with um, clinical faculty who will teach you those counseling skills you need. And when you do that, it'll be in the evening is when we'll have our counseling um, live sessions. Um, you'll also have specialized training for those interested in working with individuals with disability. Um, one of the graduates from our on campus program is now the um, is now the city of Tampa's ADA coordinator and she helps anytime there's an activity in the entire city of Tampa, whether it's the Super Bowl or the Olympics, she makes sure that event is conducive of all disabilities and open and accessible to all disabilities. So we have some great things coming out of being a rehabilitation counselor. There is also an emphasis, a strong emphasis on advocacy and social justice and societal change when it comes to the counseling profession, as well as working with people with disabilities. And we are also part of the USF family. So we have a USF um, university accreditation um, that we work, work with. And one thing I want to let you guys know is while we are a brand new online program, um, our program is actually celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. And we began in 1972 as a rehabilitation counseling program at USF. We graduated our first class in 1972. Over the past 50 years, we merged with um, and making our on-campus program rehabilitation counseling and mental health counseling program together. Um, and so that's an on-campus program. And on the 50th anniversary, we're going back to some of our roots in disability awareness and disability science and have offering this degree fully online. Some careers that people can do after graduating with this degree, um, rehabilitation counselors for any for state vocational rehabilitation agencies. Every state in the United States has a voc rehab agency that has um, multiple openings, which is one of the impetuses for this program is to fill those openings. We also have graduates who go and work for Veterans Affairs and work with military veterans looking for support and rehabilitation counseling after injury. The other graduates can become super certified vocational evaluators and work as a rehabilitation counselor in the private sector and having your own private practice. Other one, positions could include an ADA coordinator, an ADA compliance officer, accessibility service coordinator, or a director of various rehabilitation agencies. Sorry, Chi, I think I jumped on you on that one. I kept talking. Is there something else you wanted to add to this? Yes, yeah, there's just one thing I want to add. So, like, I, as I, we talk about, like, there's a great demand in the state agencies. Some of our some of the agencies that are so um, in need of people, they will even take people who do not have a master's yet. So if you are looking, like if you are looking for jobs, then sometimes they can start with a rehab technician first. And then when they complete this program or uh, along the way, they could become a rehab counselor for the state. So maybe some of the people in the audience are already a rehab counselors and they are coming back for the master's degree. So I just want to say it's like it's a great demand career that we really need new blood into this field. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for noting that. We also want to just kind of give you guys an overview of what classes are offered. Um, again, Betsy is going to send this whole presentation out in an email to follow up, but these are the actual classes you would take. If you were to enter in a spring start date, we 
um, we've created this where it's eight week sessions um, in spring and fall. That way, if you're working full time, you only focus on two classes at a time. So spring is broken into spring A and spring B each eight weeks. The first eight weeks you would take intro class to rehabilitation concepts and application as well as legal and ethical. And then the second half of spring session, you would take counseling skills and techniques where you'll learn actual counseling skills um, to work with clients and you'll work with um, some of those live sessions in the evening. And you'll also take a medical aspects course. And then you can kind of look through, I won't read all the classes for you, but it's kind of fun just to see, I don't know if you're interested in counseling and disability sciences, it's like being a kid in the candy store and seeing some of the great classes we offer. One of the unique things of offering this fully online program is that we're able to offer more classes that are disability focused than our on campus program currently offers. For example, we offer um, disability justice and trauma informed care, um, which we don't offer on on campus. We also have um, applications of assistive technology um, and some other things, advanced case management, and a lot of our classes are going to be heavily disability focused. If you aren't right, if you have if you don't graduate till end of spring, we also do have a fall start date and it's a little bit of transition. Um, it just kind of pushes everything back. The only overlap we have with our fall and our spring cohort is you will have the same courses in the summer with the other cohort. So we try to make it where you'll get to meet some of the other people coming in. We are also one of the questions we get is um, some people already have a master's and they just want to get their CRC as they're working in Vogue Rehab right now. Um, so we are open to non-degree seeking students who just need a few classes to be eligible for their CRC. And we can answer questions about that at the end as well. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Chu to talk about the program cost. OK, um, so for this program, because this is fully online cost recovery program, so it's a flat fit. Uh, flight rate of um, tuition per credit hours is 600 per credit hours, no matter you are in state or, or out of state. So for 60 credits, the total amount is 30, 36,000. Um, and they are, there are financial ads that you can, if you are eligible. And then we are going to talk about more scholarship later. Um, unfortunately, because this is a cost recovery program and we try to use a, a flat rate uh, for tuition, the state of Florida tuition waiver is not eligible for um, taking this program. Thank you, Dr. Chu. In addition to the coursework we talked about, um, you will also be doing two practicum field experiences where you're actually working in the field. So you'll do one semester of practicum for about 100 hours where you work in a disability agency or a voc rehab agency or a rehabilitation counseling agency. Um, your advisors will work with you on helping you find what best fits your long term goals. In addition to a 100 hour practicum during the semester, you will also do a one semester internship for 600 hours. So this will be a full time um, like a full time job for you that you'll be working in the field getting that experience. One of the questions we get are if you're already working in the field of voc rehab or with a disability agency, can you use your current job for your practicum and internship? There's two answers. The short answer is yes, you can. And the longer answer is we just are going to work with you and your supervisor to challenge you to do new responsibilities when you're utilizing it as your practicum and internship. Anything you want to add to that, Dr. Chu? Um, the the field placement is also a requirement for certification. So 700 hours total is just meet your requirements for CRC. Yep, absolutely. And it allows you to apply all the knowledge that you're getting in the class into a field experience. And I'll switch it over to Betsy to go over the application process. If you find this is something that you're interested in. Okay, so hopefully you're sitting there thinking I'm ready to apply right now. And um, if you are, the application process is pretty easy. Um, I included step by steps on the screen. So the first thing 
that you can do is um, when you go to the RCDS website on the left hand um, corner, there's a, an admissions tab. And then when you click on that, there's a place where you can say apply now. That will send you to the Office of Admissions portal and you'll create um, you'll create your own uh, like ID and place for where you can upload all of your documents. Um, once you create that, there's a place in it. And would you mind going to the next slide, Jill? Of course. Yeah, so then once you create um, your login information, the application um, is fairly straightforward. So you, we will ask for a statement of purpose, your resume, three letters of recommendation, um, and transcripts from any of your undergraduate um, places. If you came from USF, we have access to those transcripts, so you don't need to um, request them. Um, then there's an application fee. I will send you an accountability and background check um, piece of paper that you can um, upload as a supplemental doc. And then you're welcome to, so if you've taken your GREs, you're welcome to submit your GRE scores. If you haven't and you work in the field, or if you haven't and you have some reason why you'd um, like to request a waiver, um, we're pretty generous with the waivers. So you can email me. Um, we have a form to submit your waiver request. And once you submit that, it will get sent to the faculty. They review the waivers usually once a week. And so you should hear back within a week. And trying to think, I think that's that's about it. My questions for the faculty, though, I know this comes up sometimes. What are you looking for in the letters of recommendation? Who should that come from? And then with the statement of purpose, is there anything that really catches your eye or gets you excited about when you see applicants just so they can put together the strongest application? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a couple of things I was going to cover. One, in addition to, I'll answer that in just a second, but in addition to the GRE waiver, if you've worked in the field of folk rehab or in disability sciences, or if you've volunteered for agencies, um, or if you've had a significant GPA with courses in, that you think would be relevant to this program, those are there's many things um, that can be qualified for a GRE waiver. So if you're questioning whether you want to take the GRE, I recommend that you request a GRE waiver and go ahead and fill it out. In addition, if you're living with a disability and you won't have life experience that you'd like to use um, as your GRE waiver, that is welcomed as well. As far as the statement of purpose, we want to know what do you want to be when you grow up? So tell us what you would use this degree for. What are your goals for your future? How do you see this degree fitting into those goals? So we really want to see what your um, next few years look like after graduation and um, just apply it back to the program. That would be great. Um, letters of recommendation. It would be great if we can get at least one letter of recommendation from a former instructor um, in a university setting. So somebody uh, who has a PhD who can attest to your academic strength. Um, other uh, letters of recommendation can be from former bosses, current bosses, um, places you volunteered work, and anyone that can give us an idea of your character and your work ethic is what we're looking for. But I will really strongly suggest not to ask your parents or friends or relatives to send recommendation letters. Yes, I would I would lean more towards professional and academic okay. letters of recommendation. OK, that's great. And so at the end of this session, I am it usually takes a day or two for the recording to be um, processed and put a um, link to our website. So I'll send you a link to the recording. And then I will also include all of the instructions for the application. So I'll include a link to where you can set up your portal, a link to where you can request your GRE waiver um, and those supplemental documents that, that you have. And then anytime from thereafter, if you have any questions, you can email me and I will um, get back to you quickly. This is a, um, the applications are reviewed on a rolling basis. So if you use this long weekend and get your statement of purpose together and um, your resume, you can upload it. And then if you're able to get the letters of recommendation sent um, soon, as soon as we have everything, we can review it and um, give you a decision. So you don't have to wait until October 1st or October 15th to submit. And I will say that this faculty is extremely motivated. So in the spring, we had 
no more than two week turnaround from the time there was a completed application to when people got a decision. So um, that is nice that you won't have to wait and wonder for a long time. Uh, but if, without going any further, I'm happy to answer questions about the application or you can just um, ask questions about anything to do with the program. And you can either turn yourself on or you can write it. We have one question. What does the coursework load look like? Time needed weekly to participate and complete assignments. That's a great question. So you'll take about two classes per session, eight week session. So um, that'll be six credit hours and it's probably about 10 hours to 10 to 15 hours a week. Um, of course load work that you'll be doing depending on the courses some courses more some a little less and then i will say most of the classes are like you can like it's you just follow along with the with the instructor some of some of them especially the clinical classes will have hybrid format which means like you need to be a is a synchronized pro a class that at some point of the time that you have to go online and like for example, role play with your partners about well getting the uh, counseling skills, and so there will be like there will be some time that you will need to be at certain time you have to be sit in front of the computer. But a lot of the coursework that I've that's been designed um, is very applicable. So you may listen to a podcast about someone living with a disability, for example, in Med Aspects. You'll read a chapter on spinal cord injuries. Then you get a podcast where I've interviewed a former Paralympic athlete who lives with a spinal cord injury and you hear her life experience. And then you write a discussion post reflecting on what you learned from your readings as well as the individual. So we try to make these very applicable uh, courses that you'll leave with learning a ton of information, but also enjoying the process of graduate school. We have another question. I graduated from undergrad or I graduate in May 2023, am I still able to apply now? You do need your undergraduate degree so you can apply for fall of 2023. Once you have your final degree conferred, yes. Great question. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question. I was just wondering, what is the salary range for a master's degree in rehab, please, in Florida? Yeah. Oh, in Florida. OK, Chi, do you know that? So this is a very, very loaded question <laughs> because the rehab counseling works in such a wide range of positions. So it really depends. Like, So, for example, if you work for the state, the pay level is probably not as high, but it comes with great benefit. But you, if you work with private agency like if you talk uh, talk to Dr. Delenhan she also worked in a private rehab and they she actually their company probably work with law lawyers so the pay will be really really high so I will say it's probably the but and then if you work with VA it's also a high pay um, position so it it really depends on where you are at so I will I will like like just estimate it will probably between 35 to 80. Yeah, I was going to say 40 to 80,000. Yeah. So right. uh, some of our graduates also become disability coordinators for universities or things like that, and their starting pay is 75,000. So yeah, it's really it, it's really looking at what you want to do with this degree because there's so much range available to you. Um, and that's one thing your advisor can meet with you about to talk about what your career goals are and we can show you what positions you'd be eligible to apply for upon graduation. Thank, thank you. Yeah, great question. And somebody asked that, yes, yes, this is a cohort model um, program, so you will of events with your cohort. So it says this degree can be used towards other fields in rehab counseling other than vocational or disability. Yep, and rehabilitation stands for disability, so it's really focusing on people with disabilities for rehabilitation counseling. Substance use is an issue that we consider a disability or a medical condition for people, so we do have that. We do have come some guest speakers that will come in and speak to the classes um, who do private uh, rehab counseling. 
um, and they are will do career assessments for people in the private industry, and he has his own private practice in counseling people. Um, so there's such a variety in this profession. One other thing I do want to note is every state is different on how they receive this a rehabilitation counselor. So some states in the US, not Florida, but some states accept having a CRC that you're eligible for private mental health practice. It's called a licensed uh, professional counselor. Um, so it depends on what state you plan on living in as well. Are you, uh, are you able to add LMHC courses as a minor? Dr. Chu, I'll let, give that one to you. So this one is uh, like this RCDS program is different than the clinical rehabilitation mental health counseling programs. You are like when you graduate from this program, you are I think you are one course short. From the standard L LMHC programs, but for different state, they have different requirements to be licensed. So depending on where you are interested to go or practice after you graduate, you can look up and to see if the coursework it's like meet the standard. So there's no like we don't have a minor offer in this program, but most of the classes count toward your licensure. Depending and on we have course. we have a very similar question with completion of degree with of this degree. Are you certified as a mental health counselor? Yeah, so mental health counselor is a licensure and uh, rehabilitation Council is a national certification. So it's a different credential for the CRC is a national certificate certification, which means wherever you go, you don't need to reapply. For Mental Health Council is a state license, which means it depends on which state you are in and the requirements for coursework or for the hours of practice, practicum and internship is different. So in the state of Florida, like I said, our program is probably one course short from that, but they have other requirements for practicum internship and after, and um, you have to become a registered intern after you graduate. So there are, there are additional requirements. If you are interested in becoming licensed mental health counselors, you have to probably like, you can talk to us individually, or you can look up to the, um, what is it called, marriage, Counseling, social work, marriage and family license board. So it's the in the in the state board, you can find those information. And you'll have to look per state because I know there may be people logging in from different states. So when we look at mental health counseling, again, it's based on the state you're in. The certification when you become a certified rehabilitation counselor, that certification is good for five years. And then you have to complete so many continuing education credits in that five year span to get renewed. You don't have to take the exam again. You just take your CEUs um, like other professional licenses. Hey, somebody doesn't want this. Somebody just retake the exam. Yes, and if you don't want to do CEUs, all right, that was me. I took it twice. I took it twice. I forgot to do my CEUs. Betsy, you had a question, comment. Yeah, so I'm just pretending to be a prospective student right now um, because I have the benefit of knowing our, our students who just started. Um, Dr. Heilman, can you tell the people a little bit about the students that are taking it now and who what their classmates might be like and kind of their backgrounds and stuff like that because um, I think the students are part of the thing that make the program so special. Yeah, great. I think one of the things about this program is that all of us who are in this program went into the field of rehabilitation and disability sciences for a reason and were impacted personally. So for me personally, I have three kids with chronic medical conditions and I was going to become a psychologist and I realized there wasn't enough support for families who have um, kids with medical diagnosis. So I went back and got a degree in rehab counseling and I uh, do research and, and look at the things affecting the psychological, the social and the emotional aspect of living with a disability. And disability society, one in four Americans live with a disability and yet it's the largest minority group, but it's the least minority group talked about. And this is why we need this profession where we have people trained to work in this profession. Within our first cohort, we actually have two individuals with disabilities that are students. One happens to utilize a wheelchair um, and wants to work on advocating for disability rights in a political arena. And one student is legally blind and she currently works 
for the um, Federation, National Federation for the Blind and wants to have more leadership roles in those agencies by getting a master's degree. Other students that we have are current voc rehab counselors for um, different states. We have one in Georgia and one in Florida right now. There might be one more um, and they want to get a higher pay raise. So you get a higher pay raise when you have a master's degree and your certification as a rehabilitation counselor working within the state voc rehab system. And then we have other people who are still working on figuring out what they want, but they know they love the field of rehabilitation and disability sciences. And this is the area and the coursework that they're passionate about. Great question, Betsy, thank you. Any other questions while we're on? All right, well, I'm going to stay on for a little bit. Otherwise, I just want to thank everybody for joining us today um, and we look forward to seeing your applications, hopefully, or uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to any of us. And don't forget, you'll be getting an email from Betsy in a couple days or in 